Alrighty folks, it is that time of the year. I am going to be going over every single modification, every single thing I have done to this boat behind me so that you guys can build the exact boat that I have here. I get a lot of requests for this video. I did one last year and you guys absolutely loved it. It's still one of my most viewed videos every day on my channel. So I thought I would do another one because you guys obviously really enjoy these. Now here behind me, I have every single mod put on my boat all at one time. Obviously, I'm doing this so I can show you guys every single thing I've done to this boat, but typically on any random fishing trip, I don't have every single modification on the boat because there's some things that I just don't need for each trip. For example, the trolling days, I don't have the anchor on in the back because I'm never anchored up. I'm always moving. However, if I'm bass fishing or something, I'm not going to have the rod holders and the downriggers on because I'm not trolling, right? So every trip is different. This is just showing you guys all the stuff on my boat and you guys can figure out what you need based on your trip without further ado let's get into this Alrighty, so obviously the boat itself here is the Bass Pro Shops Pond Prowler 8. I do not have the 10, I have the 8 size. It's a little small, but it still gets the job done. Luckily, this one can go on top of my car, which is why I got the smaller model. These are coming in at around $630 for your, your uh, standard one without a sale or anything else going on. Now, for the motor up front, there have been some upgrades compared to the last video. There's going to be a lot of stuff different from the last video, which is why I decided to do a new one this year. So, my previous motor I had on here was the Minn Kota Endura. It was just the Endura, and that one was, a, I believe, a 35-pound thrust. Now, I wanted some upgrades, so this is the Minn Kota Endura Max and is a 55-pound thrust. And the reason why I did that is I wanted some more power. I wanted to go a little faster. I also got rid of the outboard motor in the back. I don't have it anymore, so, you know... I want to be going at least three miles an hour or more to get to my fishing spot. So this does about 3.3 to, to four miles an hour, depending on how much gear is on the boat. I absolutely love this thing. The reason why I went for the max now is because this actually has settings up front and I can adjust the speed of the motor very slight adjustments. So instead of just having a one speed through five speed, I actually actually have like one through a hundred. So I can, if I want to go an extra 0.05 miles an hour faster, I can make those adjustments with this thing. And when I'm trolling for kokanee, sometimes the difference between 0.1 miles an hour is the difference between catching fish. So uh, I wanted to be a lot more specific with how I run my speeds. And it certainly paid off this year because I caught way more kokanee this year than than I did last year. All right, now I also did an upgrade this year on the battery. Uh, last year I had a lead acid battery, which nothing against them. I mean, they still work, right? But I upgraded to a lithium battery. Not only are lithiums lighter, but they also have a lot more power than a lead acid battery. You can go for a lot longer, even if it's the same amp hour battery. A lithium, it doesn't peter off like a lead acid does. So you don't burn through that last 50% as fast. So these go way longer. I also upgraded and got an even higher amp hour battery. So before I had a uh, Everstart 100 amp hour lead acid, and now I have a 160 amp hour lithium battery. This thing goes forever. I have not once run out on the water. Like I was running out almost every single day I had that lead acid battery, uh, especially cause I'm trolling, right? That was the big thing. With this, I have not run out once and I've actually done two or three days in a row fishing and not run out so this thing is huge uh, the company is amped outdoors they were super kind enough to to work with me on some videos here and they are an awesome company they are in terms of lithium batteries they are cream of the crop uh, this thing has been an absolute beast for me. I, this is one of the best purchases I have ever made. Uh, I can also use this as well, eventually, if I were to upgrade boats or whatever in my life, right? This thing could last 15, 20 years. So whatever I need this for, marine-wise, I will always have it. So I kind of made this more as an investment, not just a, a, a simple purchase for this boat. I know I may be using it in the future. So absolutely incredible. This has been a huge upgrade for the year. You don't have to go with 160 amp hour i think you could easily do 100 amp hour for most fishing days and be totally fine even a 50 or 80 amp hour if you're just bass fishing ponds and whatever with your boat but in my case i'm on some of the biggest lakes in idaho trolling all day long potentially two or three days in a row uh, and i need that extra little uh extra oomph in there you know 
Now what's cool is these Bass Pro Shops Pond Prowlers, they actually have in-boat wiring already rigged up. So you don't have to worry about doing anything extra on this. Um, I have just a battery box that I bought with the battery here. So basically this, let me put my mic down for a minute. Basically this thing just goes over the top like that and your battery is all kind of protected from the elements. I also have a breaker back here, which I will show you guys. All right, I'll show you guys with the GoPro cam here, right? you've got a breaker and this is a 50 amp hour breaker that I have installed into the side of the boat and basically this wires through into the battery and then this side goes in here and that actually goes inside the boat and then pops out up front where you guys see there which is what's connected to the trolling motor up front so yeah this thing uh, basically if your boat were to have like a, a electrical surge or different things happen uh, this thing would actually just switch off so what you would what it would happen is this thing right here would snap out and that's how you know it would basically it would basically stop all electrical current anything going from the boats your trolling motor would shut off everything would shut off um, and then all you have to do is just pop that in to completely reset it and you're good to go it hasn't tripped or anything for me yet uh, however it's still nice to know that I have that uh, this thing it's very easy to install it's only like 20 bucks and it could really save your butt so yeah uh, I did this just because I'm running higher batteries and trolling motors now and I feel like I feel like with those upgrades you need to be a little bit safer on the water especially because that is my only form of transportation or like of, of movement right of power on the boat so if this thing were to go and I were to be like two miles from the boat launch and there's no other boats I'm quite literally screwed the next part I'll talk about here is the very back which is the rudder I used to have an outboard motor back here but since uh, that last video I've actually sold that motor uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it to begin with uh, I don't like bringing it in my car and just whatever and that thing now has enough power it was almost going the same speed as the outboard motor anyway so there's kind of no point in having it so I have replaced the back with this homemade rudder uh, this has been probably the best modification I've ever done on my boat this thing is just oh my gosh I mean this boat it does a lot of turns and twists in the water, especially if you're trolling. If I've got downriggers going, right? One downrigger's up, the other one isn't, so there's extra weight on this side. Everything pulls this boat and it tails really bad. But with this rudder, it has completely changed what I do on the water. I mean, it has just revolutionized the back end of my boat and all those tailing problems I had. And it was so easy. All you do is you just click this thing down boom and then that goes in basically it goes all the way down right and then basically that just keeps your boat so much straighter that thing has been just an absolute game changer i have a video on it i will link it below if you guys want to watch how i built it it wasn't that hard and it's just it's just i cannot speak on how freaking amazing this thing is all right now that we got kind of the frame of the boat done now we're going to go into all the mods and everything so this guy right here this is my fish finder setup uh it's all scotty stuff pretty much all the mounts the very front the fish finder here this is the garmin striker cv it's, it's the same uh fish finder that i ice fish so it's nice i just when ice fishing season's over plop it on here i'm considering making the upgrade to live scope soon but not not ready to pull the trigger on it just yet uh, it's just got a uh, Scotty mount down here, just a standard fish finder mount, uh, and it's just like a little ball hinge mount that pops it on here. And then this is the battery. Now, I did not want to connect the battery to the, the main one in the back because I didn't want to draw more power out of it. Now, I decided to do that when I had my lead acid battery. I'd probably be fine now with the lithium. However, I already have this setup going and it's really easy and simple, so I'm just doing this for now. Um, basically this little ammo box here this opens up and inside here I have my battery I just have it plugged in and that's it I just have a hole actually a hole drilled here so basically this guy right here all the wires that need to plug into the fish finder go up and then there's another hole on this side and those wires go to the transducer which is on this little uh, this little mount here this thing is super easy all you do is you basically just pop the lock on the back and this goes out like this and then you actually just twist this here boom that is down 
and then you turn on your fish finder and it's gonna start marking. So it's really easy to take on and off. This is an awesome little setup here. Like I said, I'll have every part linked below. Inside, right here, the, uh, the flooring, these are actually just gym mats. So I can actually just pull these out, uh, which is nice, because obviously they would go flying out of the car, right? So these guys, it's super easy. I just have a little Velcro here on each side. And so when those go down, I basically just press it with my finger and it pops the Velcro in and those stay all day. I have three going down through the boat. This one is, I cut it a little shorter just so it hits right at the edge there. Um, yeah, those things have been super nice. So much, so much nicer to stand on those all day. It also makes the boat a lot quieter as well because that plastic can be a lot louder than that stuff right there. So yeah, the, the flooring mats, it just basically, it's like typical gym floor mat. You'll see that on a lot of guys' boats that they run. Now, I just have my script sitting on top of my chair here. That's usually not there. But the chair came with the boat. The Pond Prowler 10 comes with two chairs. The Pond Prowler 8 comes with one. I really wish the Pond Prowler 8 came with another one because I could really use it when I take people on this boat. And it is, they are not easy to find. They are very difficult to, uh, to find. It's this bracket here. This bracket is very hard to find online. Uh, it's got to be a certain size so that it slides up and down the boat like that. But moving to the back here, right, we've got our cooler. This is a new cooler that I'm using. Uh, I wasn't happy with my other cooler that I had. This one has been incredible so far. It is called the Titan Deep Freeze. What I like about this one is, uh, you know, we catch kokanee up to 20 inches or more here in the state of Idaho. And what's nice is this one does not fold the fish the other one was too small and so the fish in the cooler folded up and then froze and so it kind of affected the meat when i went to go fillet them so this thing holds way more ice it holds bigger fish it holds more fish than the other one and it's not that much bigger which is nice so that was a great upgrade it was still pretty cheap it was like only 40 bucks and it keeps ice for a couple days which is nice it's still not like a primo yeti type cooler right but for 40 dollars, i just need something that keeps fish cold all day and it 100% does that. This right here is all of my tackle, right? So when I'm trolling or bass fishing, this is the little thing I put all my gear in. If you guys notice right now, I have all of my kokanee trolling stuff, right? So I've got my corn and whatever. I've got some of my uh, different hoochies here. I've got my lures and then I've got my Dodger sleeve with all my Dodgers and stuff. So this thing is super nice and easy to just fold everything up into. That basically is it here. Sometimes I also have my camera box sitting to the side, which is this one right here, I believe is a Pelican, uh, and that's my camera box. And usually that camera box will slide right in between one of them and I can get all three lined up like that. And that, it's nice because it gives me kind of the whole front of the boat to sit. I have tons of room, so that's good. The net that sits in the back here, this is just your standard Bass Pro Shops net. It was pretty cheap. It was only like 20 bucks or something. Um, it's nice because it's the, the rubber. You got to have the rubber for the kokanee and trout. The nice thing about the rubber netting is number one, it's easier on the fish. And number two, your hooks and stuff don't get caught up in it like it does that like crappy nylon stuff. So I just have a couple pool noodles on there. Uh, that way, if I were to drop the net, it floats. So that's it right here. Pretty easy. This kind of just lines up on the back of my boat here so that it's really easy to grab and net the fish. I don't like that spot. It's still a pain in the butt. So I'm, I'm trying to, to brainstorm and see what I could do to like put the net up. Like if there's some type of net holder I could install so that it sits up so that I, it's out of my way. Um, but as of right now, I'm not going to do any huge changes with that because I feel like it's, it's, it's annoying, but it's still an okay setup as of now. I don't want to screw up and drill something into my boat that I really don't want to use. So the only other thing I have in my boat here is the anchor setup. Um, now this anchor setup is really cool. I've worked a long time on, on getting everything perfected here. So basically this right here is just a clothesline hanger from Amazon. And I've replaced the clothesline hanger with rope. Uh, you can actually use the clothesline hanger. I did that for a while. It was pretty strong. Um, but I eventually I wanted to upgrade because that stuff was really slick and it was hard to grab. So the pond prowler comes with these little things right here, these little uh, loops. I forget what they're called. But basically I just put a screw through this and this sits right just like that. And since this thing is like spring loaded, it's retractable. So the rope just goes right back into it, which is really cool. Um, this right here is the Scotty anchor lock. This thing is so cool. I, I cannot believe somebody like had the ingenuity to make this, right? So what you do is you pull this up 
like that and then you can drop your anchor and the second it feels so say the anchor is uh like hitting the bottom right and your boat's starting to pull away it actually just locks boom it closes down on it and it holds it and you don't even have to do anything like you can just right now let you can just let go of it boom and it locks it it is such a ingenious design it is so freaking cool um and then to unlock it all you have to do is just pull this and it actually just pulls that thing up and then you can let out as much line as you want and then the second it goes back to it it'll lock again like that uh, the second it like detects pressure so it's super super cool they're a little bit expensive but they are 100 worth it especially if you are bass fishing the anchor this year i have now upgraded to a 15 pound before i think i started with like a five pound that didn't work so i tried a 10 pound that didn't work so then i went up to 15 because i just it, it, it's such a pain in the butt uh to like be moving around in the boat and, and with wind so i just went to a 15 i may be getting another 15 next year to put to the front so that if i'm bed fishing or whatever and i want to just stay in one spot i have two anchors to drop um, however i'm not sure there's some mods i could put on that trolling motor that would actually create a uh, spot lock on it so i'm considering doing that and then i wouldn't even need the anchors at all so yeah kind of thinking about that but for now this is the setup i run i absolutely love it i just have a metal carabiner here from the rope uh this is just kind of standard rope uh, you can get it at any hardware store or amazon and yeah works really well i think i have about i think it's about 25 feet of rope which is nice because i'm typically not going to be anchoring more than 20 feet anyway um so yeah you guys will notice i have a lot of these brackets on my boat here uh these are the scotty locking bracket side like i think they're called like the side deck lock mount uh by scotty and these basically hold all of scotty's products which are really nice not affiliated with scotty by any means uh, i just really like a lot of their stuff on the boat so that thing right there uh, i have tons of these on my boat because they hold all the modifications it's nice because if i want to move this thing to the front i can because i've got more of those locking brackets up front all right now for the front of the boat here i'm going to kind of go over all the cosmetics on the outside of the boat your the front of your boat by the way is going to get just loaded with bugs if you put it on top of your car so they're really easy to clean off but just you're always going to have that that's just something you got to think about out here uh this comes with the boat this is actually a drain plug this is an absolutely horrible drain plug it the drain plug itself isn't bad it's the location because the water doesn't really sit up here and drain out the drain plug would be much better down below the boat um so i probably will be doing some changes this year but for any of you wondering you basically just pull this out just like that and that is a hole in the boat so then you basically just put this back in and you actually just twist it it's hard to do with a GoPro in the other hand, but if you guys notice, it's kind of going in there, and the more you twist it, it'll go back into the boat. So, yeah, that thing is actually pretty nice. I mean, it's a clever design. It's just in a really bad spot. Um, but then in the front here as well, we have this little uh, handle strap. Uh, you can get these on Amazon as well. They're super easy. Uh, it's harder, obviously, when the trolling motor is up front. So if I'm carrying the boat for like a long ways, usually you have to take the trolling motor off so that you can pick up the boat. But typically, you know, like if I'm at the boat dock or whatever and I'm like bringing the like I have everything taken off and I'm bringing it over to my car or whatever, uh, then this thing is awesome. I uh, just installed on each side it's been super strong that was i think the first mod i actually put on my boat i would recommend everyone doing that one that's a really good one to do most of you guys have seen the video for this mod right here this is my uh diy camera stick if you guys are not filming your fishing trips and you don't have to worry about this one but this one was made with an old goodwill tripod here and i put like a ball mount on top my camera goes up here so that you guys can see all the views i have an external battery on it not going to go too deep into this just because i have a whole video on it which i will have linked below but this one also has a mounting bracket down here and it is completely adjustable to whatever view I want it's super nice now each side almost looks the same because both sides have to have your sticker and registration and then both sides for me have the rod holders and downrigger but this side has one extra piece which is the uh, paddle and paddle holder this paddle I actually found on the bank uh, at a local Idaho Kokanee Lake and I actually loved it so much more than my other one I ended up selling the other one and just keeping this one um, 
This one's a little bit more sturdy, and then it's got a little push stick on the, the one side, which I love for pushing off from the bank. Uh, the other one didn't have that. It was just both paddles, which I don't need paddles on both sides. So I love that one right there. And then this guy is the paddle holder. Now, this is another upgrade compared to last year. This one is by Yak Attack. This is hands down the best kayak paddle holder on the market. Uh, what I love about this one, it has a little bit more strength than the other ones, and it also has this really easy lock here. So basically all you do is you put this in and then you fold this over and it locks the paddle in place that it doesn't go anywhere that paddle like these locks are really good i don't think the paddle would ever go anywhere anyway but it's just nice to have that little extra assurance here especially since i put some new mods on my boat and it kind of makes the paddle sit folded like this now it doesn't sit straight like it used to for me so it's nice to just have that just in case all right now this is another one that i'm actually doing some adjustments with this year um, and that is the rod holder downrigger section of this boat so the downriggers here are the Canon Mini Troll. They go for about 100 bucks. They're super easy. Uh, I just have a four pound uh, downrigger weight on here and then some custom kokanee clips here. These are by uh, Kokanee Tackle. These things are absolutely awesome. I've talked about them before in videos. Uh, these small clips, yellow clips like this are so much better for holding line than those big, those big chunky ones. Um, so yeah, I love that right there. These are super easy to set up. Uh, I actually have, if you see down here, there's a little metal plate and all this is is basically I had a friend weld this little, uh, it basically look, looks kind of like a, a sharp U and it slides in the in the boat right here and then I drilled them in and it's basically a piece of metal there because this downrigger if it's just on the plastic it's going to kind of fold and bend the plastic and it could potentially tear that on the boat so that little piece of metal there basically allows it to sit on that boat a little more solid and not bend the inside of the boat at all I'm sure if you went into like a metal shop and you asked them to just make these just a little thin sheet of metal and it just basically basically makes this little U uh, and you show them the dimensions of what you need for your boat I'm sure they could do it for pretty cheap like i said i had a friend do it for me uh for this so i got kind of lucky but either way it shouldn't be too too big of a deal now for rod holders i'm kind of changing some things up this year uh before i actually had these guys and these guys fit onto the railing these little mounts here they fit on the railing of the boat and then these sit um but i'm kind of changing it up this year or at least even the past month, this is a very new modification for me. These are the Scotty rod holders. I grabbed, I bought one of the extended posts here, and then I also have one of those brackets here at the bottom, uh, and it keeps my rod a little higher up, and I like that because then the rod isn't like banging against, the, the way this one sits, for me, it sits right against my legs, and it's really hard for me to turn the boat, but when this is so much higher up, not only do I get a better bend on the rod on the downrigger, I get a more ideal bend at least on the boat um but i also get that rod out of the way it's also a little bit higher up so it's easier to me to for me to grab out of the rod holder overall i just like this i like this rod holder better than the other one i think it's easier to grab the rod out uh this a lot of improvements with this uh, and i will probably be talking about it in a future modification video uh probably in the spring but yeah, this part right here, this is a huge part of my boat just because of how much I troll with this boat, especially for kokanee. Um, and I've really perfected this area. So if I were you, this is, would be exactly how I would run this. Another thing you guys will see that I've done here is I've done these little rod straps. And this is really nice when I'm bass fishing because the rods will line up on this side and it kind of keeps them all in, in one spot and not, you know, flying around, especially because this little chair moves right across here and if i have a rod like hanging over and that thing were to like bend and snap it that'd be awful so this little thing right here it's been super easy to install uh all it is is if you see there's a little uh it comes with this little thing so you install that here and then you have to install this little thing on this side of the boat and it just has a little strap and that goes over the top so basically you open this up you put your rods in and then this folds over just like that super cheap super easy i have one down there as well and it was like six dollars or something and that's a huge mod you can put especially if you're bass fishing and you really want you know you're carrying a lot of rods on the boat typically i don't have more than like three rods on this boat but you could probably do four and get away with it another thing i'll show you which is very hard to see but i'll get my gopro down there you probably see that little tape down there that's on the boat i have tape on this side and i also have tape on that side Let's see if i can see it from this angle 
Oh uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but there is tape down here as well, and that is called, I believe, gator skin. I will have it linked below, and I have gator skin on the main contact points of where my boat usually hits the ground, and that is just so that it helps, you know, not tear up the bottom of the boat, and that stuff has taken an absolute beating. I'm probably going to have to put a new layer on, but the nice thing is, is that's taking the beating and not the boat. So that stuff can really save your butt as well. Uh, it's pretty cheap. I mean, I, I guess it's, it's like 20, 30 bucks uh, to do for the bottom of your boat to at least put it in like the main areas. But that is another one that is huge. It could absolutely save your butt. And it's nice because now that I have that stuff on there, I don't worry as much about bringing this boat through like some rocks or like on a boat ramp or, you know, areas that like a kayak would really scrape up on the bottom. This thing is nice because I can kind of take it into some shallow crappy stuff if I want to because I'm you know a little safer on the bottom with that stuff real quick here I did take something off compared to last year last year I had this little uh, cup holder here and it's another one by Scotty uh, the area I put it on this boat was a pain in the butt because I'm constantly turning with my legs and I kept catching it uh, and it didn't really even hold my stuff that well the little cup there so I actually don't even use that cup anymore I really wish I didn't do that that's kind of the only regret on this boat uh, of all the modifications that's the one that I regret doing so yeah if you do do that mod uh, put it somewhere where it's not going to get in the way uh, or don't do it at all like I did the big thing with this boat that I cannot stress about enough is if you are just a first time buyer and you're getting this or you've had it for a little while or whatever and you haven't taken it out very much, don't install a bunch of crap right away. Take this boat out, just buy a trolling motor, battery, get out on the water, goof off for a couple trips, try to catch some fish, and see what you need, right? That was something that I remember when I first bought the boat. I was watching a video on it, and a guy said that, and I went, wow, that's really smart. And that's exactly what I did. If you guys have noticed, since the time I bought this boat, I have just very slowly added new things onto the boat, and then I've kind of shaped this boat to exactly what I need. Everything on this has a purpose and it's very custom to my needs. So that's something I'd recommend. If you're buying this boat or whatever, don't just drill a bunch of crap right away, right? Just go out, have fun with it and see what you need and then slowly mod it out. I will put the modifications for the rudder and camera mount right here so that you guys can see it. Uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this video. I know a lot of you were waiting for this. I had a lot of new mods compared to last year and I probably will have a lot more next year as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time on Humbug Videos.